Hey guys, welcome. Good evening and welcome to rapid exam prep sessions by Merit Nation. How are all of you doing? So, uh, well, I hope uh, these sessions have been uh, productive for you. And this is the last session in the series for grade 10 biology, right? So management of natural resources. This is the chapter that we are going to deal with today. So again, uh, like the last chapter that we were dealing, that is our environment, this chapter is fairly easy, right? So here you don't have complicated concepts, but uh, to an extent, only general awareness about the uh, natural resources and how do we need uh, to address that. Uh, Sadvik, that's correct. Uh, in your live sessions, generally, uh, your chemistry teachers take this. But because we are talking about natural resources, which is... Uh, lastly, pertaining to field of biology, for YouTube sessions, uh, biology teachers are taking this. Okay, cool. Uh, so let's uh, straight away dig in to the topics that are covered in this chapter, right? So natural resources. First of all, what's a resource? A resource is anything that has utility for you, right? So uh, something that can make good use, uh, that can be uh, made use by humans are resources and the resources that we get from nature are natural resources the word itself says it all right so the resources that we are going to deal is uh, forest and wildlife water coal and petroleum hi kavya okay so uh guys before we uh, go there first we have to understand about the crisis what is the crisis that we have we are dealing with in natural resources that is depletion and pollution these are the two major problems that we are facing with our natural resources okay and though not specifically brought out in the ncrt like this but the underlying theme is that so first the natural resources are depleting at a huge rate right we'll discuss that tushar don't worry about that we'll discuss the weightage okay and secondly uh we can uh the we whatever availability that we have that is decreasing in quality and even some to some extent quantity by pollution right so we have both a loss of quantity and quality right because we keep on adding uh, substances to the natural resources that make it less worthwhile okay so that means we have to understand the distribution of natural resources so that it can be effectively distributed and the management of waste, okay, that is going to help with the crisis that we are dealing with. So by waste management, you uh, a bit uh, learn in a bit more uh, in uh, your next chapter, uh, sorry, in the chapter environment by the concept of 3R, right? Reduce, reuse, and recycle. So you learn about this in your next chapter. We'll talk about sustainable management, Naki, don't worry. Okay. Then you talk about management, right? So uh, how do you manage as I was talking about waste management? So you have the three R's, right? As discussed right here. Then you have sustainable development. Now, what is sustainable development as someone was asking? So development means we are increasing our capacity. We are increasing our utilization of resource. But sustainable development means we are developing without harming the future potential i'm giving a very very easy example of this let's say today you want to drive to all distances you want to use too much of petroleum you want to use too much of gasoline but there is a limited amount of gasoline right you keep on um using all of that and your future generations will be left with none of it right so that is what it is sustainable development is development without affecting the future availability of the resource, right? So how do we carry out sustainable development? Largely through policies, okay? Largely there are policies that uh, make sure that we are not overusing the resources, okay? Now, now that we have understood, and these, we will discuss that, Manash, don't worry. We'll discuss the important questions, the last year questions, the sample, sample questions, the uh, other analysis. Don't worry about that. Okay. Now, coming about, what are the natural resources that you need to be covered with in this chapter? We have three, forests and wildlife, water, coal and petroleum. 
right so we know and we have studied a lot about forest and wildlife what's uh, what's wildlife it's the flora and fauna sorry uh, it's the fauna that you find and forest uh, comprises all the flora right okay so uh, okay uh, garbita see what when you say sustainable man i think sustainable development is the word Okay, management is a part of develop a sustainable development, right? You are managing the resource in a way that you achieve sustainable development. Okay, don't confuse between between things. Okay, so sustainable development is a part of management. Okay, now let's talk about forest and wildlife. So forest and what are the uh, so what do you need to understand in forest and wildlife? What are the problems? Uh, th are that are existing in the forest and wildlife. So what are those? Uh, we know that we are decreasing the forest cover. And with the forest cover going uh, to very uh, less amounts, we are destroying the wild uh, habitat for wildlife, right? So we are uh, destro uh, destroying the diversity, right? And we know diversity is a very uh, important factor, right? So diversity maintains the any ecosystem. We'll talk about Abbas. We'll talk about all of that uh, questions when we'll be do dealing with questions. Don't worry about it. Watershed management or uh, any such questions when we're dealing with questions, we'll talk about that. Don't worry, Abbas. Okay. So then, uh, what are the case studies? As you can see, in all the natural resources, we have to be aware of the case studies. And I will tell you this: that it's very important because majorly questions are asked from one of the case studies. Very importantly, the Narmada Bachao Andolan and the Chipko Andolan. Okay, so uh, what are the case studies that you need to be aware of in forest and wildlife? First is the Bisnois, right? The Amrita Devi Bisnoi uh, movement that was there to again save trees, right? Then Chipko Andolan in the cage rally of the Rajasthan. There also the uh, it happened in 1970s. They, uh, the women, they uh, hugged the trees and did not allow the contractors to cut it down. Right? Then you also need to talk about Arabari forest that in, is in West Bengal. Now people generally lose track of Arabari forest, but it's a case study that's mentioned in the NCRT. So make sure you don't miss that. So it, what it was, it was basically when the West Bengal government re, uh, realized that the plans by its forest department to exclude the um, uh, yeah, the AK Banerjee is uh, so it, to exclude the people, the local people out of the uh, uh, conserved area would, uh, you know, increase the viability of sal trees, right? But that didn't happen. The, the forest was, wasn't restored, right? So uh, then they uh, they started incre including the general, uh, the local people, the localites in the management of the forest. And then we had positive results, right? So we, you should be aware about each and every of these case studies, and it will be well if you know the years as well, though not very necessary. OK, next we'll be talking about the case studies uh, in water. Now, what are the problems of water? Many, right? We pollute water a lot. We have thermal pollution, chemical pollution, biological pollution. We can write ev all of that into it. But again, the questions generally target the traditional wa water harvesting, which some who I think someone asked about watershed management. We'll discuss that, and we will talk about the case studies. Now, the very important case study is the Narmada Bachao Andhra and Ganga Action Plan. Okay, now uh, so Ganga Action Plan is about cleaning the Ganga. We know a related question that is asked from this section is about the coliform. Now, who, what are coliform? Coliforms are a group of bacteria, okay? And uh, these uh, group of bacteria, they live in intestine, but their presence has been found to increase profoundly in the gan Ganga, right? And because of that, uh, what happens is uh, they are very path pathogenic, okay? So they may cause problems in us, and their presence in Ganga is a rising concern. So Ganga Action Plan, uh, aims to clean Ganga and reduce the coliform count. Namada Bachao Andulan was basically a protest um, uh, uh, regarding the, the increase in the height of the uh, Sar Sarovar, uh, Sardar Sarovar uh, dam that was built there. Okay. So these case studies are important from that point of view. Now, watershed management, what is, what is a shed? 
okay it's 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 a catchment area where, where you arrest water and you use this water to recharge the groundwater right so that is watershed management what is it it's basically building in catchments or uh, maybe on the surface or in the open areas of river right and what do you uh, how do you use these encatchments you trap the water you uh, use the water that otherwise would be flown away for example rain water right so if you have a uh, in, uh, if you have encatchments on your roof okay so uh, what will happen uh, then uh, think about it you will be able to store all the water that's there on the roof and you can drive it through pipes into storage areas and it will help recharge the underground water okay so that is the imp uh, importance uh, raju for the chipko andolan it was largely followed by women see that's the story of the chipko andolan that while the contractors found a particular time where the men of that area were not there okay in in the tehri district right so they were away and so contractors tried to use that opportunity to cut down the trees so men were away at that time but the women took stands and they came together and they hugged the trees and did not allow anyone to cut it so the chipko andolan is largely followed by women on uh, large, was largely initiated by women and not men okay you don't have one person you have the entire uh, group amrita devi see amrita devi was a bisnoi okay okay sorry so she was uh, the one who helped uh, save the trees uh, in back in 1731 she did not allow the contractors to cut the trees okay now case studies uh, sorry uh, the coal pet, uh, and petroleum date of chipko and it, it was in 1970s abbas see for bisnoi it's 1731 For Chipko Andolan, it's 1970s. You don't need the exact date. For Arabri Forest, it was in 1972. Okay. Now, coal and petroleum, the last uh, of the natural resources that you need to cover in this particular chapter. You already know what's coal and petroleum. These are all uh, resources that are fossil fuels that are in the category of fossil fuels, right? Now, the problem is they take enough. time to uh, form right so they are formed after millions and millions of years of you know uh, um, decomposition and carbonization and stuff okay, processes because of intense pressure and heat right so they are limited they are limited by their availability as in they will be formed but the time that is used to form them is very very large very huge right so that's the major problem that they are exhaustible they will get um, uh, we will fall short of them if we use them at a very fast rate right that is why we are immediately or with very uh, immediate um, attention we are looking for non conventional fuels like uh, solar energy wind energy and hydrothermal elect uh, sorry Hydro, um, hydroelectricity, right? So all of these can help uh, reduce the tension that is there in the coal and petroleum area. Now, what are the case studies that you uh, can know about this? And now, again, this is not uh, exactly included in this chapter. You talk about the Montreal and the Kyoto Protocols in the chapter R environment, but it's not uh, uncommon to link the two. okay because you are indefinitely talking about coal and petroleum so you can talk about montreal and kyoto protocols okay now let's have a look at the uh types of questions that can come from this chapter as i earlier earlier underlined case studies right so uh case studies are important because they are straight away asked in several exams okay so especially the chipko andolan and amrita devi visnoi right uh they are very frequently asked in exams okay so make sure you are aware of that then uh sorry okay now then you uh can be asked about the dams and its effect now in the uh part where what we are dealing with water as a natural resource montreal is a place nelema nothing else montreal is a place that is a place where montreal protocol was signed kyoto again is a place where the kyoto protocol was signed 
Montreal and Kyoto protocols are about decreasing the um, greenhouse gases, sorry, uh, the uh, ozone depleting substances and greenhouse gases respectively. Okay. Although you deal with it in a bit more detail in the chapter, our environment, but because it's also related with this chapter, it is important. Stakeholders, Swayam, are people or uh, organizations who are directly um, harvesters of any natural resource. For example, if you talk about forest, the locals living in that area are direct stakeholders. The industrialist, uh, let's say paper industry, is a direct stakeholder from of the uh, forest and wildlife, right? Shruti, main use of coal and petroleum, largely it's used as an energy source, right? You, you make fuels out of it. Okay. Now, building of dams and its effect. This is a question that has been asked repeatedly if you will analyze the past papers, right? So dams and its effect is very important. We also will be discussing this question in the future, uh, in the next slide. Definition of dam, Sumera. Dam, it's simply uh, a huge catchment area which is used to store water. Okay, it can uh, take the uh, derive its uh, water from rain. It can derive it from uh, a river or so on and so forth. No, VBQs have been uh, left with in the NC uh, in the uh, latest uh, announcement from the CVSC, so they won't be asked. No more VBQs. Okay, now let us try to understand the last year board's question paper. As I said, dams are important, right? So first of all, what is a dam? So what's a dam? It's, it's a huge area where we store water, which can be derived from rain or a river. Why do we seek to build large dams? Because dams have two important outcomes. Dam is good, but the excess of anything is not good. Vikram, you'll understand while we complete with this question, you'll understand what I mean. So what are the good points about, uh, I'm writing good, okay? So what are the good points about dam? First, they offer a solution to irrigation right if rain falls where will we where will we depend on water right so we'll have irrigation uh right availability because of the dam right and the second as uh, um sharon has pointed out hydroelectricity which is a non-conventional electricity and does not use any fossil fuels Right. So, uh, Abbas, I think that has already occurred uh, by the physics faculty. I think Amit sir has taken it, uh, but I'm not sure about it. OK, so uh, so hydroelectricity and solution for irrigation are the good points for building large dams. But what are the problems? Problems. So why is it bad? What are the shortcomings? The shortcomings are you need to displace a huge amount of people. You need to displace people. What else? You need to clear forest. And hence, you end up destroying habitat for wildlife. The, because the people have to be displaced, they lose their economical life. They lose their social life. Right? They lose their... Uh, a whole, uh, you know, uh, the entire balance of life shifts away. Shruti, four main stakeholders, think about it. The uh, the forest department, right? Because they are dependent on it. The, the, in, uh, the nature enthusiasts, the paper industry, and the local tribal population that lives in the forest. These are four main stakeholders. Okay. Yes. Yeah, even the fishes, the uh, because dams can be used for fishes, even that is a good point for... It creates a social problem, Vikram, because, see, earlier these people, the tribals that used to live there in a forest, they were a social community, right? They have their own language, their own traditions, their own religions sometimes. But when they would be shifted to a new area, they would be completely a fish out of water, right? Completely out of place. They, they will, my, the families might have to divide and they have a very joint family structure. They have a very good community structure, but when coming to cities, they have to abandon their uh, traditions, their languages, because they have to uh, sometimes adapt to the uh, situation that is there, right? Villages, yes, they are also stakeholders. As I said, tribal tribals living in that area. Okay, so as we can see, 
these are the major problems that we face uh, wh while building huge dams, right? So to maintain peace, these are the three main problems that uh, we have to deal with. Okay. Now let's talk about the sample paper question. Uh, so this was a paper issued by the CBSC and they have asked uh, the presence of a particular group of bacteria in water bodies integrates contamination, identify the group. Now we discussed those are the coliforms. Coliforms are a group of bacteria that li live in our intestine and have some of them have been known to cause diseases, right? So we don't uh, want that to happen. But recently, the amount of coliforms in, uh, in Ganga has increased many folds, which is uh, becoming a problem. Okay, now important points to remember. Uh, well, in this chapter, we don't have any diagrams. So that's a good thing for us. We don't have any diagrams to practice, but we have case studies. Make sure that you, are, you, are, you have revised all the case studies. You know the important people. You know the important dates. Only three dates are important, 19, uh, th uh, sorry, 1731, 1970s, and 1972. Okay. Now, so uh, use mark plus one scheme. So if the question is of two marks, at least give three points. Now, by three points, I don't mean three sub-sentences, three separate points point right so if you are asked about uh, to write about the bisnoi community you have to uh, you have to uh, tell when the movement happened who started it that's point number 1 second what was the problem and how did they ins inspire change so we have three entire full points yes parul you have to learn case studies bring awareness about conservation of forests we have uh, okay the two ways is deep inculcation in the uh, uh, re, uh, study patterns. For example, see, like when you study about this chapter, if you are, uh, uh, you know, studying about it, you know that this is what you uh, problem that that happens, right? So if you start uh, first is this the awareness to the coming generation and awareness towards those uh, the generation that have already passed the stage of study, for example, People don't know about uh, the uh, or don't understand the effects of a deficit environment because they don't know, know about it, right? Okay. Amrita Devi Bisnoi is associated with the best uh, with to, with the production of trees in 1731, and Banerjee is associated with uh, the uh, this uh, in West Bengal. They were trying to you know. Uh, manage the forest area in the Arabari forest. So Amrita Devi Bisnoi is, is, is associated with that and Arabari with Arabari forest AK Banerjee is associated. Okay. Uh, you will find in uh, about more details about it in the inside. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, sal trees. That's co correct. Now, don't forget to revise the paper once you're done. Guys, uh, people often make this mistake. Uh, they lose track of revision. Please do that. Practice questions from the question banks, very important. Okay, now, so how the water of Rio Ganga has been on forest produced? Uh, Shruti, can you reframe your question, please? Shruti, can you reframe your question? Aswam, uh, it's, uh, it's the, uh, I can't exactly tell you the entire story right now because of time constraint. It's, it's clearly given out in the uh, NCRT, don't worry about it. If you have a doubt, you can ask right now. How the Devakant, uh, we do not clean lake, but we need to clean an aquarium. The thing about Devakant, I'm very glad that you have asked this question. Even NCRT mentions that uh, there was this, uh, in the Kashmir Valley, what happens is there are a bunch of troopers that um, uh, the locals, they take their uh, um, herd uphills, okay, uh, in summers for uh, grazing, and then they come back in winters. Right. So they didn't um, the government had a problem because uh, that used to, uh, you know, take away the green cover. So people used to think that that will take away the green cover and they stopped that. So when they stopped that traditional management, what happened is that the grasses started growing tall and it didn't uh, allow the soil to become more fertile for the next growth phase. 
so the entire area started desertifying or i should say uh, started losing plant or vegetation right so when a, a, an ecosystem the practices of an ecosystem are able to take care of itself so a lake has if it has good quantity of fishes it has good quantity of microbes all of that will take care of itself right but an aquarium is a closed system where only you are the major uh, provider of it so you have to clean it because it's a closed system whereas lake is a large system with many organisms in it which are able to take care of it okay Okay, so guys, that's me uh, signing off, and I hope this session had been uh, uh, of good use to you. Uh, make sure that just a moment. So uh, you can try to subscribe to us to know more about our um, uh, how we can help you, right? So uh, that's me. Bye bye, and um, do well in the exams. All the best.